Hello, fellow gamers. I'm Gloryhound, and here's the very headachey Dr. Glory Hog. We're gonna say exactly everything we said from our drop dropped stream. No, Can you no remember way. everything? No, I cannot. I'm just glad it's back. <laughs> the whoever's using up all the Wi-Fi, calm it down a bit, okay? We're gonna have to find them, and we're gonna take care of them for all of you out there, okay? <laughs> yes. All I right. wish there was a way to track who's using up all the Wi-Fi in the neighborhood. Sometimes I, I'll using hunt them it. down, and I'll be like, "We have streaming times, people." This is our time. Our time. Get off. Our 10 fans need <laughs> us to make fine decisions on board games. If you're new to our channel, make sure to give us a thumbs up on this video. Subscribe and ring that bell to get notified whenever we go live so you can have this lovely, <laughs> lovely chat time with us. My we face does hurt every time <laughs> I look in the mirror, Battle Cry. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect, Battle Cry. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The kid was watching another video, but that's not. We it should not be enough. We went in there and we kicked the phone out of the kid's hand, we're like, get off the internet. The internet is like our single most expensive utility, except it for is. like air conditioning yeah. during the summertime. So for the amount we pay for it, it should really work. It should work all the time. But you know how that works. There's like two cable companies in the whole state, so you only have so many options. So Aridia, so, uh, Radidia, however you would say it. This is Aridia. This is by uh, Far Off Games. It's for one to four players. This is a cooperative RPG style game. Doctor? So the most interesting <laughs> thing about this game is that it's made by people who made Zia, Legends of the Drift. Yes, absolutely. Actually, the designer made, it was Cody Miller, and he made Zia, and oh, there was another one that I was thinking of, too. I didn't write it down. I wish I would have wrote the other one down. Which is a highly rated Space yeah. 4X game, right? Mm -hmm. So, but it's hard to find. Like, it's not everywhere. It's not like at your local retailers and stuff. So that makes me feel like this game is probably going to be one of those ones that, with it being like $165, with the normal MSRP being like $200, I feel like it's going to be pretty hard to find in stores. Most stores don't want to back a $200 game. Right, the starting price is $165, and I th think like the upgraded version is $195. I really like, it's not like though, they put a lot of money into all of the production in it, because right. the game has minis in it, they're all full color, they have these switchable heads that you can put on there, so you can kind of design your character. I really, really love that portion of it. And Petter says, the internet is for one person at a time, them's the rules. And I Hello, totally agree. Mather. Thanks for joining <laughs> us again. Thank you, everyone, for joining us again. Absolutely. I would apologize for the internet, but I don't run the internet. Yeah. I'm not that fancy. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what this reminds me of? When I think of the price point, because the price point is what's going to turn a lot of people off. It is a dungeon delving style game. It is the closest thing to an RPG that we have probably talked Absolutely. about. Besides actual RPGs. Because it's miniatures, it's loot chest, it's spending three hours in a town talking to the blacksmith and trying to bust somebody out of jail. It's very much where you can spend 40 plus hours just exploring without actually doing any combat. So that makes, for me, it makes me feel like it leans a little bit more towards that storytelling game or RPG than it does like a dungeon crawler like Gloomhaven, which is read an intro fight. Yeah. Read an intro fight. Yeah. This is oh, like, yeah. You get this to... is explore. You actually you can get, get to go in buildings. You can like talk to people in the buildings. Which can trigger and, events. Yeah. You can actually get role playing events in this game, which you can use for leveling up also, which is, which we haven't seen before either, where it's like you're getting storytelling points basically for telling story, giving more breadth to your creations. To your characters and stuff yes. like that. I really like the maps in this as well because it reminds me of those seven continent style maps there where they're very detailed and then you're going to go and visit certain points and certain things are going to happen throughout the campaign. I had also referenced this being a little bit like Gloomhaven as well as far as going through the moving your characters through the combat portion. I like the saving portion on this though way way better like way way better. What are you doing? I'm right trying now? to see if I could clip it to my body. Don't do that. Oh, it why almost you, gonna, why you don't need a scorpion earring, Doctor. What is wrong with you? You just got distracted Sorry. by a scorpion making a scorpion earring? Yes. Don't give You're me delirious. things. You're delirious. Why do you keep putting things in front of me? <laughs> I don't know. So, it's like we have to have like... Nothing on the table. Three feet of clearance in front of you just to if make you sure that's not messing with me. I'm gonna touch them. And I can't have a mirror anywhere around here or any sort of you because you look at yourself. I here. can see myself in the oh. Get out of here. Sometimes I take off my glasses to look at myself, but oh then I can't God. see myself as well, so God. I put on a second pair. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. Aridia, the big problem with this game, the deal breaker for most people is going to be the price. Okay. But when you think of it in terms of an RPG, 
I think I've spent way more than $160 oh, on definitely. painted miniatures, yeah. bad guys, settings. Um, different role-playing books that you have to have, like the Marshall Players Guide and all these different guides and stuff. A lot more than $165 for sure. I still think that's going to be the biggest sticking point. For me, I think the deal breaker, and when I say deal breaker, I think these are deal breakers for me or for possibly other people, will be that this is an RPG. So I think this goes out of the realm of something I can play on a Saturday night to this is something I feel like i got to dedicate a bunch of time to. Yeah. And I just... I have a couple campaign games already, but those seem a little bit more condensed because there's chapters and I feel like I can walk away and come back to them. I feel like this is something that once you play, like you're in it for a while. And it sounds like it's Definitely. fun. Jeremy Howard said he played for five plus hours in one go. <laughs> I've spent more than Jeremy five hours. Jeremy Dovin. <laughs> I've spent more than five hours playing one game, but it was usually because I was playing like through three different scenarios of Clank Legacy or yeah. you know, two different Tainted Grails or, or something like that where it's still multiple chapters where I could have stopped if I wanted to. So this... It gives me anxiety, the amount of content in this. Like, really? it's so much that I feel like we I have, have other, to have... We have other games with lots of I feel like this content, has, though. Whenever you put that 1 to 40 plus hours, I don't have a work week. You just get scared by, like, the opening context sort of thing, so... It could go forever. I could play this until I die. So, really... I'm dying tomorrow, by the really way. Really quick so here with... Know. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> in the comments, Veffer says, I think Iridia is priced reasonably well for what's included. Yes, I agree. 100% agree. The pricing is on the point because you are getting all of the miniatures, you're getting all of the art and the cards, you're getting the story. Like, it absolutely is. I completely agree with that. Ooh, no thank you. Says, looking at this makes me think I need to try Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion and save $150. <laughs> Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion is an, is an amazing intro yes. into Gloomhaven. It walks yes. you through how to play it. You should. It's a very good scenario. It's going to be more combat heavy than world building, but... That's Gloomhaven. You still make choices and everything, but it is a combat hand management game more than it is a straight RPG. You could save yourself a lot of money and get pirated versions of D&D. Don't do that. <laughs> you wouldn't steal a car. Maybe you would. So Cohen says, I'm backing it, but I'm wondering what about re replayability? I think that by the time you get through the whole thing, Cohen, be real. Are you going to want to replay it again? That's a lot. A like 40, 40 hours on one session? Mm -hmm. I feel like how many times are you going to want to replay it? Right. You could spend, like, just hours talking to the blacksmith and random people and, oh, you have a sheep? Well, let me help you find that sheep. Oh, no, that poor girl stole it? Oh, that poor girl really needs the food. Well, do I stop the poor girl from stealing that sheep and return it back to the guy who needs it for his harvest, or do I let the poor girl keep it? You'll... I swear I played a game where I just recently had to do that You'll... decision. What game was that? I don't know. Go ahead. What, what, what game was that? What... Do you remember it, too? I do. Then it wasn't a video game, then. Oh. No, it was a video Destinies. game. Destinies. Yeah. Destiny's, oh, was it wasn't a, a video game. It was, yeah, that's it was right. A, there was that's a poor right. girl that stole a, sh a sheeplet, and I had a to decide to either lit. steal that's it right. back from her, buy it from her, to that return it back to That really ended out really bad, too. It did end up really <laughs> bad. I felt bad. So Luke says, the designer did a great job with Zia, and Far Off Games has spent years honing this game. I'd consider getting together with my old D&D buddies to try this game. Fair. This year, I, I think that'd be the perfect group to play it with, though, too. That's the whole thing. We have a lot of RPGs, which is what we... We actually were discussing off camera a lot about the different RPGs yeah. we have and time. Yeah. Right? Because time is a resource, I've been told. I don't know. I don't spend it wisely, but I've been told it's a resource. <laughs> Battle Cry says, I wonder how many times those heads can stand being switched out. I don't think it's an issue because the heads look like they drop into it. And you're, unless your miniature is going to be tipping over all the time, I don't exactly, think it's really an issue. Exactly. At least one more time, then you can replace your own head. So it's got more <laughs> replayability that way. <laughs> As Board Game Co. would say, the resale value <laughs> after you've played 40 hours, you can probably sell it for more than you bought it for. That's I like if Mepper. You Mepper says 40, it, yeah. 40 hours is if you're running. If you're walking, you can spend much more time than that. <laughs> That's fair. That's very, very true. Yeah, and the resale <gasps> value, I don't resell a lot of games, but we do resell some of them. Sometimes you can make your money back. A lot of times I'll still make within like $20, $30 of the game, and if I've spent X amount of hours on it, it's cheaper than going to the movies. So... So Robert says, it looked interesting, but price point had me pass. If they had unpainted minis or a Meeple version, I might consider. I, I, don't, I always like that option, but I do I like, know production-wise, it just doubles their costs to I do like that. I like that option. However, for this particular themed style game, I don't think it's an option that fits the game. Like, I would not want to play in this game with Meeples, personally, because it's so heavily... 
toward that RPG market and that miniature sort of, not miniature market, but the market of miniatures. <laughs> well, all RPGs usually that, have at least hero characters as right, minis. So that you right. can... So you can you want the art with it. and you want to imagine the you things. You want to imbue your soul into you this can't tiny doll. Imagine a bunch of things in a meeple. You can imagine a lot of things in a meeple. Did you not see the item meeples? They've got like chainsaws. That's and... different. That's different. Okay. I like this right here. So this portion right here, which is the easy setup and saving and everything. So when you start getting skills or you're going places on the map and everything, you have all these tokens that you flip out and everything. And then they're like inlaid into the board there, so they're set into the board, and then you can stack up the board, shove them in there, and boom, now your whole game is saved. That is a genius way to organize tokens, so you That's don't have stuff good. all over the place. You're not like, oh, well, here's my little baggie of cards. Let me get all my cards out. Like, I like that more, and plus it's so organized. I really like the organized portion of it, like... Way, way it, too it much. Is, <laughs> right, it is very cathartic to watch them do that over and over again. There's a lot to this game. I don't honestly feel like we can do it justice in the amount of time we're going to talk about. It. There's just so much I you could discuss. I completely agree. And this is a what we like to call what we have coined our lifestyle games, where you could yes. spend hours and hours and hours or years potentially playing this mm -hmm. game because it does seem like there is a lot of replayability in it. So, so Petter says I had a debate between this and Chronicles of Drugnar. With, and I ended up going with Chronicles right. of Drugnar. Barely. Here's the big thing with this one, okay? Here's what I think really sets it apart from other games in this style, like your Gloomhavens, like your Chronicles of Drugnar, any sort of your dungeon crawl style games, is that this particular game, I feel like the art and everything that's going for in the game will lean more towards getting your kids into it. I feel like it's more... Gosh dang it. Doctor... You just lost a devotion. <laughs> if you kill the cat mommy, you lose a devotion. Do so you think it'll be easier to get your family into it, it if you wanted to? It looks like a family style game. And then you'd be able to branch this off into doing RPGs or whenever they get older, going into maybe a darker style RPG game or that's dungeon the ultimate crawl. Goal, you know what I'm right? saying? Is to make your kid play yeah, game dark so they can have absolutely, nightmares. Absolutely, yes. Uh huh. Absolutely. Mega fingers. <laughs> Who in chat is backing this game? I thought I had seen a couple of you already backing. So I did read through Petter's, oh. Petter's thing where he went through them and everything, and they were very closely matched. He ultimately did go for Chronicles, but it seemed like it was very close, and it could have gone either way. Cohen says this is true solo with one playable character, which is rare with that sort of stuff. Usually Agreed. you have to have a party of characters. So thank you so much for bringing that up, Cohen. The Dragonborn game we're looking at like doesn't have, as far as I can tell, a true solo, because even the two-player game requires two AI players, it looked like. So Galazar looks much better for kids at half the price. That is absolutely fair. The game we covered last week, too, Earthborn Rangers, was about $80. Mm -hmm. Now, it was mostly cards, but it was also less. Mm -hmm. It was less expensive. And I thought there was another comment here. Not this is going to be hog. such a table hog. Every, every kind of game like this kind of is, though. This is an epic fantasy versus the grimmer, darker fantasy. Yes, absolutely. It matters how you want your fantasy, honestly. When it comes down to it, you're I probably like, going to like it. I, I do like that it's all like inclusive. Like, you yeah. feel like you're getting everything, like painted minis, and you know, you're going to have chess for your character specifically and yeah. everything. I just don't think I have, personally, for me, have the time to dive into another game like this. I have other ones that I'm more interested in. I just Maybe it's like, because I lean more of that grim dark. I was going to say, I like grim dark fantasy. We are a grim dark fantasy household. Like, Apparently, I think yeah. we had, didn't we have this issue the other day where we were talking about mm -hmm. a game? Yeah. And then oh, it was Earthborn, right? Earthborn? No, it was the. There yeah, because it's one. all about like repairing the earth and like. You're like, there's not enough murder. And I was like, Bleh. we need we need this to be post-apocalyptic bad. <laughs> like, Ooh. and I don't know why. I just really really like it. So Petter says shipping is extremely reasonable, which is at an almost worrisome level. I agree. Anybody who's quoting shipping now needs to have a giant <laughs> asterisk that says, unless shipping containers cost forty thousand dollars each. I like Xavier games. I like my fantasy with a side of beer. I agree. You need your taverns with your beer in them and stuff like that. And you go. Petter, and... your message got deleted by the Google oh, moderator Petter. team. You're in trouble. Be good. Be good, Petter. Ooh, Google knows about you, Petter. <laughs> Google's watching you. If you're interested in this game at home, though, go ahead and take a look at it. I yes. think we have a link in the description for it. We do. If you are back, well, at least we did in the old video. If you are backing it, tell us why. We would like to know, like, in the comments below the video like why you are backing it Absolutely. or why you're not we always like to kind of sift through that because sometimes 
Our minds can be changed. Right, exactly. And that's kind of what the show is about, is going back and forth on pros and cons, hearing from the audience, and then having everybody be able to make their own decision and what they want and what's right for their own gaming table at home. So, Because I won't spend your money for you. This one here, I'm going to probably pass on because although it seems really, really awesome and it has a lot of really cool stuff in it, the high light fantasy theme to it is not necessarily my cup of tea. Like, I want to get in there with a necromancer and blow stuff up and everything, you know? Fair. Raise the dead. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I see that. That's fair. There. Yeah, it's currently a pass for me because I just don't want to spend the money for that type of game currently. I'm pretty full up on campaign games that I still need to play. So, let's see here. Okay, next up is Dragon Bond Lords of Valia. Is it Valia? Valia. Valia. It's French. Valia, is it? No. This is by Draco Studios. It's for one to four players. Should last about 60 minutes here. The designers of this game are Jack Cesar, or Cesar, I apologize already for mispronouncing your names, and Alicio Cavature. But Alicio has done a lot of stuff with Warhammer, which I thought was really, really interesting. Okay. They also worked with Bolt and Conquest a lot, which are all like miniature sort of based games. Like right, miniatures, guys on a map, moving around, stuff Plus, like that. Plus they've done multiple campaigns. Because Draco Studios, we've looked at their stuff before. Oh, absolutely. I they remember did specifically because the they chicken did... chicken one. They did the Chicken Island one. Chicken I want the chicken one. But they one. also did miniatures. They did a couple campaigns for just, the, just miniature the miniatures for the dragons. Yes. And I remember looking at it and I thought about backing it yeah. just because like these are some really cool looking dragons. Well, at a good price, we should just back these just because we want some dragons. Because everybody kind of wants some dragons, on right? On the Kickstarter page, you can see how this has, like, evolved. And I feel like they started with a story behind this. Because you can see the miniatures come out. You can see, I don't know if they did an RPG. They did some sort of other book or something like that with this particular entity. And now they've, like, made this game. And so you can see kind of, like the storytelling and everything being brought up. And you can actually look at that through their previous Kickstarters, which I think is really, really interesting. Like, you know the story in this is going to be super fleshed out and everything with what's happening here. And with this game here, you're going to have, you can be either a dragon or you can be a, not a guardian. I don't general. remember. General. There we right. go. A general. And at first I was like, oh, like, why would you want to be a general in here? Like, that seemed bunk. I don't want to be a general. You, everybody wants to be a dragon. Tell me in chat, are you going to be a general or are you going to be a dragon? Well, here's the advantage of being a general <laughs> is that you get to, in fact, you have to have troops to spread out and do things where the dragons can only be in one spot. The generals can spread out. Plus, you can, like, get all huggly with a dragon and be like, hey. Really high, dragon. And then you soul bond and then you win or die together. <laughs> soul bond. Dragon bond. You dragon, oh, dragon bond. bond. But not like, bond. not like in Rick and Morty. It's a different type of dragon bond, okay? Like, Whoa, very different Yeah, very, that. very that different was, sort of dragon that's a bonding. Deep cut. Just as a note. I don't know note, you should mention that. As a note. <laughs> <laughs> so, with this game, and Mario had made something earlier, and there's a lot of card-based, kind of like RPG-style board games out right now. So, yeah, you kind of have to compare them to each other and vote on them. This is very different. This is a race to get the most power to try to win, right? So, this is kind of a conquesting game, like a fighting game, area control slash objectives game. So, this is a very different beast altogether overall. What's... I'm going to... I'm sorry, I'm going to pause you. Like, I like Jolly Lumpy's comment. I think the problem with this show is that you're all good information and reasons for buying. <laughs> That's fair. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> all right. So what's interesting about this game, and I think the thing that could potentially be a deal breaker for somebody one way or the other, this is a programming game. So what that means is I start off first. We play down a, a, an event card, right? We don't know what it is. Right. Then I play a card. Right. Then you play a card. Then if we were playing just two-player, we'd have AIs. But some other people play their cards. And then eventually when someone says, pass, I don't want to play any more cards, another event card is put on there, you flip it over and you go from the first event yeah. all the way down, right? Yeah. So those are interesting because it's almost like you're doing like hidden bidding type things that you can do, like in some other games that I enjoy, like Game of Thrones 2nd Edition does that, with like the hidden bidding. But it only is like one token, and they have one token. So there's not a lot. Or with Ankh that we just played, you played a battle card, I played a battle card. So there was like a little bit of stuff happening, but it was, I can make new decisions at every level. Yeah. But this, you're making multiple decisions potentially if nobody wants to pass. Right. And then they all flip and resolve, and that can really change the battlefield. So for me, typically, that's a, I'm an out. I you typically do here. not like those style of things. That being said, I watched Maple University, short and sweet. They're, they did a pocket-sized playthrough of this, and it actually looked kind of cool. 
So Tarant, okay, so what changed so your Tarant, mind on it? Because so I don't, well, here's the thing. I thought me, so Tarant was playing. Well, here's why. Well, for so me, the, was that mechanic. It. For for me, that mechanic. Are you mechanic, gonna ask no, me a question? No, I'm gonna. You have to have the thing, and then ask, I'm gonna ask you the you're question. You're gonna ask me a question, and no, then you're gonna I'm talk. I'm gonna talk, Got and then I have to ask you the question. So hold on. <laughs> you already asked the question, though. It's been asking. I'm just saying, I also had issues with that particular mechanic because, as someone who's strategic and moving across the board, I want to know what's happening especially if i'm playing like four player game or something like that i want to know what's happening around the board whenever i get to my turn and then be able to make a fair judgment off of that and that doesn't give me the ability to do that so go ahead i think that might give you more ap too right because you'd have to be thinking really far ahead yeah so i watched tarant uh Tarant and stella yeah play it right from people university and the way they were playing it is he was playing a general they had two ai dragons in the middle okay. or an ai dragon and a general in the middle and then um, she was playing on the end, right? So they would play out their cards one at a time, and it went around and around and around and around. I don't know why, but watching them flip the cards over actually was interesting. I usually dislike that type of mechanic, but as they were doing it, I was like, oh, that kind of looks kind of fun. All right, that, that actually does you look kind of fun. You actually work better with those type of games, though, because the, your card isn't necessarily... When you put your card down, it's not, I'm going to get this verified movement. It's, what can I do with this movement? So, no, like, well, you a, reacting yeah, to it true. as it's it goes around. Different. Yeah, you reacting to it as it goes around, you're better at reaction-style games. And Because if you play a move action, and all of a sudden I get that move action, but something else happened before right. that, then I can kind of go, okay, well, now you're over there. Now there's more power over there. I want right. to go that way. Right. I will say I typically don't like... I typically don't like whenever you have to play with AI opponents, but I did kind of like how these AI opponents played where they had very specific things they were doing. They were going towards wherever, whatever territory had the most power, right? And they were trying yeah. to collect the most power because they could. They were fighting against you. They could take power from you. Like, they could take power from the region before you get to it and everything. They had their yeah. own little power levels and everything. And then they had different things that could trigger, too, where, like, this one wants to hoard, so he's going to immediately take a power, like, on his turn. And this one wants to do something else. Like, they had some slightly different things that they were doing. And then when you're playing the general, all your different troops have slightly different ways that they act. Like, your cavalry does something different than, like, your footmen and... And so on and so forth. So and then, it's a style of game that you like, but it has that reactionary stuff that I like. So I think that was kind of interesting. When you so when you dragon bond with somebody, then you have to win the game together with that person together. Right. Right. So I don't know how that works. I wonder if in a two player threes, game you just kind of like join together. Threes and like like threes and fives. If it gets weird, this is one to four. So what happens during that three? A three player game. Yeah. Does the one person just like they're like really sad that they didn't find their so, dragon love. I, I, this always <laughs> reminds me of Rising Sun when we played at that convention. And it was like you and I and like two other people. Oh, we knew everybody there. Yeah. But like I joined up with a friend, you joined up with a friend, and then we had poor Jesse by himself. There was no one to join up with. And he had joined the group later. He only knew you and I. He didn't know the other two people at the table. Where Everybody else knew each other very well. They were our normal gaming group. And I felt and so bad. Felt bad. And he didn't care, but he I didn't. felt bad that he couldn't like merge Join with anybody with or couldn't do anything and so you can't when merge, Oth came out if you can't merge with somebody that's just do you want to let me bad. finish it all I'm not or? really i all mean right, cool. no <laughs> i'm kidding Go one ahead. of the things that i was excited about with Ankh is that you only merge if you're the bottom two and it's a, used as a catch-up mechanic instead of a popularity thing where it's like well i'm gonna merge with petter and then you're like well i'm gonna merge with kabuki and i'm like all right cool like and it's you know, like the top two end up merging against the bottom two. Like that sucks, kind of, right? Yeah. So instead of it being like a, a situation like that, it's like the bottom two go, "Hey, we need to join together, or we're going to lose." And so it seems, even though it's forced, it seems a little bit better. I know I feel like I liked it the way it's implemented in Ankh better than Rising Sun, where you just get to pick and then you pick whenever you break it and all of that. There's definitely some good aspects to that, but it, I don't know. Overall, I think I like the way Ankh approached that situation the best. So with this, I don't know how that would work with three. Would there be one person that doesn't Dragon Bond? And do you want to Dragon Bond? It might not even be worth it. If you're at nine power, like, why do you want to bond with anybody? You don't care. You're like, dude, I'll win this by myself. I would love to win this as a stupid human and laugh at all you dumb dragons and be like, ah, 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 you dumb dragons, you are no match for the human armies. Just saying. Are you good now? I made a stop. I paused. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So Luke says the base price of this is $49, which right. seems reasonable. And I'm not sure I'm interested in this type of game. So $49, it goes $49, $79, and $99. 49 is the base price without the miniatures, which I think is really, really nice. 
because me going into this game, I'm going, oh my god, it's going to be so much money. I'm like, I really have to look at the mechanics of this game and make sure it's something I like. Whereas $49, I'm like, oh, I could try this game at $49, no problem. Like, you I'd get, be down with that. Do you get no minis at 49 I don't think you get any minis at 49 I thought at you 49. still did. Let's, I mean, we can go and take a quick look here. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, you're just going a little one. Just says, including all lock stretch goals, armies of blood and dreams, including... So you're getting the armies of... of oh, no, you are getting... You are getting... You are getting miniatures, miniatures. At Never mind. All miniatures supplied and pre-assembled. Right. Well, then See, what's the difference between the two, then? Scroll going down. down. I'm going down. Scroll down. Yeah. See, you do get the maze of forty nine. Thank you. Count Jack up to six players. Oh, so it goes up to six players with okay, that one instead okay. of one to four. Okay. So you're adding more stuff ha! to the game at that. I don't want Thank you more so much players for being here, Draco Studios. We really, really appreciate the you showing up and alone, everything. Forty nine. Uh, since they unlocked a bunch of different, since they unlocked a bunch of different things, also. 49. With other miniatures for other things besides just like the main people and stuff. I think that's like surprisingly good. That's killer. Right? That made me really think that I was like, mm, that's actually a really good deal. And they've done some of these miniatures. So I'm assuming that some of these are probably just like alternate sculpts of something that they've done something similar. So they're not spending a lot of resources right. on making have, new dragons. Right. They already have the resources of like they've been to factories trying to create. Right. So these I think that probably helps. The past. Yeah. Past stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming Ooh, I'm that's really how they're interested. cutting the price down. But yeah, $49 is really inexpensive for this. Um. <laughs> yeah, you get a cosmetic expansion with 12 extra miniatures for free. That was the other part. That's right, right there. Uh, okay, that everyone. In. Okay, everyone. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Jeffrey's like, Jeffrey's like, how are you doing minis at that Jeffrey's price? Jeffrey's like, how are you doing the minis at that price? Um, <laughs> magic. So I think, magic. I mean, if they're reprinting dragons that they've done before or dragons that are similar, that would make it cost less. Mm. And they have done yeah, dragon you don't miniatures have to pay before for too. Those molds or anything like that, which is a lot of the cost. It is or a the lot artist. of the cost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they have their dragon sculpt mini person like mm -hmm. works for the company directly or has you know some type of stake in the company, so they're just Dang making it, the guys. molds for free. <laughs> Says Nathaniel. <laughs> That's what I'm saying right now, Nathaniel. Jeez, I tune in to watch more and now. I feel like I'm going to spend more money. So I'm in the same boat right now. What? Did you have a coffee right before stream? No. You cut me off Did so I really? many times. I apologize, you cut me off doctor. to say, dang it. Like, you cut me off for that. I know Nathaniel <laughs> is very is very important, Nathaniel but man. Nathaniel is very important, okay? Maybe they just send real dragons. That that's, would be cool, too. I'd fair. be down with one one real dragon. So what I, what I would recommend is if you're on the fence with this one, because I was very much on the fence with this one, because I typically don't like those programming style games. I would watch Maple University's little pocket playthrough. That one kind of swung me the other way. And now I'm leaning more towards backing you know? I'm, I'm in the process of being swung because I really can get behind get the fact that some, one of the designers has worked so much on miniature style games. And I really, really love these type of area control combat games and stuff like that. And the only really thing that I was like not as sure on was the programming portion of it. But... I think you have to see it in action. I'm leaning, I'm 100% kind of leaning towards backing this. Mm, doctor. I didn't want to. I want to back this. I I. I want to back that. this. I want I to back that. this. <laughs> At first, I was really like on the fence where I was like, man, I really like programming like that because I've had some bad experience with some of those other games. We've gotten rid yeah. of most of them. But then I was like looking at this, I was like, oh, actually pretty cool and the price point is very inexpensive very very inexpensive i want to back this how many yeah. unplayed games does the doctor have right now don't Over... you talk about our unplayed games best at star trek we have <laughs> honestly our we are over 70. We here's the problem 70 unplayed we games. went to a game market thing and the doctor had me buy a bunch of extra games and by the doctor i mean we both decided because the doctor is giving me a really hard stare right now so by, I mean, the doctor, we both decided on plenty of games we have not yet played yet to added to our pool. Yeah, we're still, ultimately, we are big time collectors, right? So whenever we see a game at a good price, it's hard to be like, $5 for that game? Sure. Right. Even if I've heard, if I've yeah. barely even heard of it, if I can get it for five bucks, I'm like, yeah, I'm I'll get that. I'm 100% kind of leaning towards the all-in-one sense. I'm telling you, I was in the process of being won over by this because... I like dragons. I like the map 
sort of system. I like the designer. Like, I like I said, it was only that one thing, but I'm okay with spending forty nine dollars and finding out. Oh, okay, I may not like that particular portion in this game, and then going to the resale market with a game like this versus missing out on it. Here's something else I want to mention uh, with Best of Star Trek. Two things. One, whenever you get a bunch of games like by going to a convention or something, like say BGG, a lot of yeah. times those get moved so low on our priority list because they're given to you as part of the door yeah. entry. Plus, we've gotten to the point where now people start sending us <laughs> games that we haven't heard yeah. of, so they kind of move kind of low on our queue to get to. Or Plus, we buy a bunch of campaign games that we just can't play. But here's the last thing that I wanted to say before you interrupt okay. me. Is that... In the last three years or so that I've been actually tracking our games, we've had over 750 games in our collection, at least at one point in time. So 70 games is only like 10%. That's not that bad. We played 90% we played of, a lot our of our games. games. <laughs> our, our collection usually is sitting around 300 to 400 ish games that rotate in and out. That seems to be like our our point though, because we've started selling games finally. Like for the longest we time, we just room. collected, we collected, we collected, we collected. So and here's the other thing too. With our channel growth and what all of you love out there, which is luckily the style of game that I like playing, which is miniature style games, you know, skirmish games, RPG style games, yeah. you know, guys on a map, area control, stuff like that. We've actually started culling our game collection per what our channel loves and what we well, love to play. You know, right, I was like, gonna say, we still have our Euros and we still have yeah. some. Abstract but games, but more I, don't, select. I don't like those as much, so yeah. it makes it a lot easier. They're more select. There are some really good games, like, say, Botnik. We played Botnik oh, with yeah. Game Boy Geek. Loved it. Yeah. Bought it immediately that day. Mm -hmm. It's really good, but Boot it's a two-player game where you're just taking a tile and you're placing a tile. <laughs> and so it would play horribly on the channel because it would just be boring to watch us go like this for five minutes going, what tile do I want? Oh, what tile do I want? It's bad enough we're playing in miniature games. At least you can stare at, like obelisks and stuff. And that's so awesome, right? But, but when it's just tiles, it's hard, right? So, <laughs> but we do rotate through a lot. We'll play over 400 games this year and it'll be about 80% of them will probably be new. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. there's that oh, too. Yeah, absolutely. So, Lords of Vala. Yes. I'm going to say I'm going to back this. I'm going to back it. That's it. I'm, I'm backing it. Okay, well, fair I'm enough. I'm backing it. Fair enough. <laughs> She's like, I saved money by backing this. Jelly says, I'm approximately two square meters of games at the moment, plus or minus. That's fair. <laughs> Five That's minutes fair. for the Doctor 30 for Glory Hound. So here we also have a pledge with the Great yes. Worms, a high level adventure book with these dragons and creatures, 5e stats for your RPG needs. Yes, we were talking a little bit about that and how you built so much world behind this, and you, you could didn't get into see that on even, the Kickstarter. Right, you could get even yeah. deeper into it by getting into that and playing. You could take these miniatures out of here and then get that, that rule supplement and be like, cool, I'm playing with these during my D&D game. Too. Absolutely. Like, if you go to Draco's Created, as I was looking through here, you can see the evolution of the cre the creation of the backstory right. of all of this here. the 5th edition RPG here. adventure. Right so here you can was see, the last one. Oh, okay. They had this idea and this design, because here's Dragons of the Red Moon, which was... Which that's the one I was looking at, because they were gigantic dragons. Well, and that's the whole thing with... This particular game is that when the red moon happens, the dragons come down and they're like looking for something on the planet, and then mm -hmm. you have the chance to go ahead and bond with them, like all sorts of stuff. So you can see the evolution of what they've gone. And just an FYI, I totally want to play this game. <laughs> I, I like totally want to play this game. <laughs> My D and D group will die long, long before needing any dragons like that. That's fair. Well, thank you so much for Draco Studios showing up to our stream. We really, really appreciate that. And for you hanging out and chat with us and answering any questions we may have. Chat, are you backing this game? Another important component to all this, too, besides needing new games for the channel, because if you play a game that's two years old, no one's going to even watch it, is that you are the type of player that likes to solve a new puzzle every time. So it's very I rare for us games. to play a game multiple times in a short period of time unless they're scenario based yeah or there's some type of missions or chapters or something to it like we'll sit down and we'll play through a pandemic game say like it over two weekends but for us to sit down and play dwellings of eldervale five times in a week won't happen yeah. i could do it i could play it every single night for a week and be fine but you won't do it i only have a few there's in enough me. new stuff 
that's happening for you to play it's, it. I have to, if I play Dwellings, it'll be like, all right, I can play a maximum of two times, then I gotta take a break. I want a, I want a new puzzle, I want something different to yes. solve. I don't want to play the same game a whole bunch of times in a row. That, that's just me. That is so we have, yeah. dang it, yes, probably, says Nathaniel. Draco Studio says, thanks to you guys, so excited. You've decided to back us, absolutely. Best of Star Trek says, yeah, I love it when the designers and publishers are here. I know, right? It makes Jolly things Lumpy, so nice and seamless. that's a plus one for Germany, so there will be a copy in Germany <laughs> if anybody wants to play. I heard it's a fairly small country. Jolly Lumpy says, I'm backing, and Petter says, well, it wasn't backing this one, but now I need to look again. You do, Petter. Fair. You do, okay? <laughs> fair, fair, fair. I think, yeah, it's going to get overshadowed by a lot of other games right now, but I think it is worth looking at. Next up, we have Legend Academy. This is by El Dorado Games. This is for one to four players. It is 45 to 150 minutes in this game here. You're going to be playing as a story tell, story book figure, and you're going to be completing tasks in a very like story tell sort of telling right, way. Right, because you're all at a university, so, right? You're like right. the X-Men at Xavier University. <laughs> you are. I mean, you're like Little, Red, Little Red Riding that Hood and Robin Hood and all these, you know, the Paul Bunyan and Paul his, Bunyan, his that's right. blue ox Alice. babe. Alice? I, I was dying the other day when you guys were trying to talk about the blue ox and didn't know that its name is Babe. Its name is Babe. Isn't its name Babe, really? Its name is Babe. It's Babe the Big Blue Ox. Oh. Anyway, it's Babe the Big Blue Ox. All these people are like, you know, in, geom in geometry together, like learning about, I don't know, tan and <laughs> Getting cosine. smarter. They're getting smarter. <laughs> I don't know, different types of triangles. Who, who yes. knows anymore? And then, but you're also enacting these different... Like the, they're sending you out to these storybook adventures to kind of like experience them. So you kind of like, it's a school project. It's like a field trip. A it's field a field trip. trip for a bunch of weird <laughs> legends. As a note, Petter says, it is on GameFound. Don't forget that part. Yes, if you are looking for this on Kickstarter, it is not there. Make sure you head on over to GameFound. That is where it is at. It's the other green company that sells board games. I'm very mad on this one. Surprisingly, Legend Academy seems like it, it should be up my alley, but it isn't, says Petter. So in this game here, I think the really interesting part of it is that when you are playing a character and you get behind, you actually get to move all of the bad guys on the map. Interesting, okay. Which I think is a really unique way to balance that portion of it. And we got to play this on well, Tabletop Sim, right, or I got to watch. It. I hosted it. I hosted a and play I, and on I watched Tabletop it. Sim. I will say... For me personally, I have the hardest time following anything on Tabletop Simulator or any of the electronic ones. I don't know what it is about a digital asset versus a physical asset. I can't follow along. So I was struggling a little bit, but I got the kind of gist of how yeah. it was all working and everything. Uh, for me, the most exciting part were the individual player boards and how you could unlock special yes. abilities. Yes, and I love that. First off, I love this that, player that map cool. thing. This thing's fantastic. Oh, scroll down. Yeah, it's this thing right here. That. That I loved. I well, love that because yes. the different paths you have to take to unlock different things. And as you're unlocking different things, they also have like these little card overlays that you add to things like because you're unlocking stuff. And then you're going to get stronger in those particular abilities. And of course, all these are different for all the characters because every character is going to be better or worse at certain things. And they're you know? all named differently too. Like you're not going to have believe and curiosity on another character, I believe. You all can also ask I believe. other characters for help. So whenever you ask a character for help, these flip over here and then... Once all of them are exhausted, then you can ask characters for help again. I really like this card building system here. So when you become more powerful, your cards become more powerful with this. So no thank you says, I can't follow TTS for the life of me. There's a lot of disconnect yeah. there. I think, Petter honestly... Petter said the same thing, too. It's hard to understand on TTS. It's because of the way people learn. It's, it's, everyone scrolls around so fast. Right. And they're, you, they're clicking and stuff. And it's just like It just seems too much. If you need to see things actually happen or to manipulate something to learn, yes. TTS is really, really bad for you as a learning platform for a game. Huh, yeah. Because you have to have more of that mind that's like just based on the stats and like the pieces because everything is so hard to manipulate in there. Like you don't have time to have that sort of fantasy illusion to bring it all together, if that makes sense. No, it you does know? make sense. I mean, there's a reason. When COVID happened, I thought, man, we should jump in on this tabletop simulator stuff. People are going to love this. Publishers yeah. can send it to you for free, Which basically. Which is amazing. I love being able and to it, try games. And it is it. nice having that option, but the yeah. reality is, is when polls are done, that's where people want don't to see like a it. physical gameplay. Yeah. They don't want to see a tabletop sim or yeah. board game arena or any of those things. They want to see a physical board game, which is interesting. I agree, personally. Maybe it's because I'm old. I... <laughs> I remember having a rotary That's phone. That's what it is. <laughs> I love how they did all the characters in this, where they have like little storybooks with all of their stuff in there. So 
think in I, I think the interesting thing too is that El Dorado. We, I liked El Dorado's last game, which was oh, Windward. Windward, I love that. And that Windward one was so like a much. fly under the radar type of thing. Oh, and then we so backed good. we backed Age of Atlantis too. I think didn't so we? Good. I think so. I thought we actually, did. Actually, I'm gonna have to go back and look. I'm pretty sure we did. I'm like ninety percent sure. Yeah. That we backed that one too, which was another El Dorado one, and we backed, of course, the expansion to Windward. So I was really excited about this game, and I I like the idea of it. I really like the player boards. I like the idea that they're very different scenarios where you're you're doing different things. They're very it's very much objective based. You might be trying to stop the little puts. You might be over here right. trying to do something else. It's very objective based. Each one's gonna have a different objective. I think for me though, the biggest thing is is that the overall theme isn't selling it for me personally. Oh, okay, interesting. Like we've we've had a long discussion on on uh, Discord about how I missed the whole Harry Potter phenomenon. Yeah. I'm a Lord of the Rings guy. Yeah. And I missed all of that just because due to the timing when it came out and everything, I was already like in high school trying to trying to uh, date this girl that I knew, but she already had a boyfriend, <laughs> so she wasn't interested. Anyways, I moved on. Not for long, apparently. Wow. <laughs> Anyways, so I moved on. She didn't date me. Eventually, then she chased me down and asked me to date her. And Listen, then it worked out. Are, are, oh, we, what? are we talking oh, about the game or yes. our love life? <laughs> the minis are lovely. I, I agree, I just Ollie. think overall, there's something not selling me on this one. I'm not as excited to back this one as I would have thought. Interesting. Okay. If that makes sense. And I don't know exactly what it is. I feel the same thing, though, about Unmatched, though. Like, the first box set is the only one that I don't have. I like the ones that are Jurassic Park. I like Deadwood or Deadpool. I like Bruce Lee. I like Cobble and Fog. I like Buffy. I don't really like the ones that are like Little Red Riding Hood and Beowulf. And maybe I just don't like liter literary characters as much. Maybe I'm just a hater. That may be the case. Because, I mean, I'm thinking about you Which and... Which makes me feel like I'm not a reader, but I read more type... than anybody else in this house does. Well, I'm thinking about you and the types of themes you really, really like. And... Yes, I, that's true. I, I like can... high fantasy. I can see how this wouldn't appeal to you because you're not a huge person with fairy tale figures and yeah. you're not a huge person with Harry Potter. And this is an exact merging of that. Like, why would you... If you liked either of these, those things, why would you not like this this game because I ain't of got that? no time for you child oh wizards God. running around oh talking about puberty and spells. <laughs> Come on, give me some real danger. I want to know that the fate of the world rests on some short hairy guy with a ring. I love That's this That's what box. I want to know. That's the kind of adventure I want. Look at this box, everyone. This box is like, mwah, gets the Jeff's kiss right here because it holds all your stuff in here. And then, like, here's where your here's the classrooms. And here, you, like, you put your little cards in here. And you're going to be doing things. Like, this is part of your board. You're going to be doing things with this portion of this. And I love this so stinking much. Like, it looks so good. Sleep Mepper likes fairy tales and books, and that's fair. I like the old Grimm ones where they're like, and then everyone died. And you're like, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> and the wolf was real and it ate her because she kissed a boy yeah. that she wasn't married again, to. And I'm like, interesting. The Grim right. Dark. The Grim Dark. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Again, hey, the Grim Dark. <laughs> it all comes full circle. I was confused with what was going on watching the pay playthrough the other night. That can happen the whenever you're doing tabletop sim. Is, yeah. is tougher. Plus, two of the people knew the game really well, which didn't help, I don't think, because... Jan from Quackalop had played it before and, I, and was helping develop it. And then, of course, the, the one of the designers slash owner slash game maker guys at El Dorado has obviously played it a bunch. And then there was the poor guy from Table Knots that had never played it. So I'm sure it was very, okay. very intense for him. So I just want to go ahead and talk a little bit about this really quick. Luke says, it struck me as a bit odd that they hired Quackalope as a developer. So here's what happens. Whenever you have or a publisher has a game and they send it out to reviewers, especially whenever things are going up on Kickstarter and stuff like that. They may have done playtesting on it and everything, but there's still things that can end up changing in the game. And because reviewers have Play so played many games. so many, so many games, so many games that are underdeveloped or in the development process, we give instant feedback on a lot of stuff for things. And it's usually really good feedback. Yeah. That's why there's so many content creators that have also designed games. Absolutely. Like the Funkhausers. Um, Eduardo or Edo, sorry, yeah. Edo's designs games, yeah. of course, because he's got that whole line. So it's not necessarily that they hired Crackalope as a developer. It's that as this game hit their desk, they were probably really interested in it and loved the theme, the concept, what was there, but made suggestions to help the gameplay in this game. And 
kind of tweak it a little bit, and then the publisher is like, oh, okay, we're going to go ahead and add you as a developer on this game, which Plus, is awesome. The, sec awesome. the secondary thing is that Quackloop has a very active Discord community, and they play yeah. a lot of games on there, mm -hmm. and so by getting with Quackloop, they're getting access to all those people on their Discord, and a lot of those people are playtesting the game also and trying to break it. Like, if you want a game broken, send it to me, and I'll break your game. <laughs> yeah. I find Our weird kid emergent too. strategies in almost every game and Our break it. Our kid is really super bad. good at breaking games. If you want us to break a game, we will we will break your game for you. <laughs> you want okay? me to find an infinite loop we in your game? Min. We max min here, okay? <laughs> when, I, when I ask questions like, wait, so I can just spend two followers every turn to get a devotion? I'm just going to do that 100 times. I win. So... Right here, Eric says, that box doesn't translate to the Tabletop Simulator mod, and that makes me love it so much more. Yes, the box does not translate, and it's so sad that we're not able to see it on Tabletop Sim because the box is, like, such an amazing part of this game, and I love it so much. Like, very, very cool how it, it all snaps together so and everything. so much cooler like, in oh, person. so good. Like the way you do the overlays on the cards and everything. I feel like having, I feel like my mind could be changed on this one by playing it physically myself. I think that's the biggest thing. I, since I don't have it, it's in that category of I'd like to play it, but I, I don't need to back it this very second. I don't feel like this overwhelming urge that I'll miss out if I don't back it immediately. Okay, that's So fair. Mm -hmm. that's why it's kind of on my pass for right now because I just... The FOMO. That's why you're on Kickstarter, right? It's because you've got to get that game because you might never see it again. I have a feeling this one will be around. I don't know. Mepper says, when did Little Red Riding Hood convince the wolf not to eat her? That's a good question. I don't know. I'm there's sure some, that's, I'm there's sure some backstory. Yeah, somebody's made some stories somewhere about Probably. that business. I mean, there was a whole comic book fable based off of that stuff. So, And that was the Big Bad Wolf in Reform. It was a reformed Big Bad Wolf. <laughs> So let's Luke hear it. Said, well, and then Draco's talking about retailer yeah. for their game. And Luke so. says, ah, oh, thanks for the info. Absolutely. That's kind of stuff that happens behind the scenes with everything, Luke. And just as a reviewer, you just end up playing a lot of games. So it, you just have a different, a little bit different perspective because you have played so many games, you know? Sometimes if you're in the right place at the right time, you can get people to initiate changes based off of feedback oh, yeah. or different things like that. We've, Absolutely. We've done some things like we've that. We've done some of that stuff before as well, yeah. A couple, but usually to the point, not to the point where we were a full developer because we didn't like offer a bunch of play testing and everything also. Never says the student version of Robin Hood looks like Robin from Batman to yes. me. I agree, 100%. That's what I thought too. That's I, thought I, thought I actually, too. until I saw the hood, I was like, oh, okay, that Robin. <laughs> didn't realize they were so similar. That makes sense though. Oh, okay, so there's a lot of really awesome things that are involved in this game. I think that Eldorado has done a fantastic job with this. Eldorado... Yeah, like Green Word blew me out of the water. Yeah, it was way a, better than it should have been for what it was. Fantastic track record. I agree. Like, Wind Word is among my favorites. It's such a fun game to we play. We need to play that one again whenever we get the expansion I stuff. I know, right? <laughs> for this one here, though... Sky Wheels. Who at home is backing this game? I want to know. Doctor, are you backing this game? No, it's in that mid category for me. I'm interested to see more on it, but I don't feel the need to back it now. I'm in that mid category as well. I think that I don't know when we got so goth in this house. I mean, I know when I did. But I don't know when you did, but because like I'm not a. Are you serious? Because this has like such a wholesome going back to school theme and cuteness to it. I don't know. Are you asking me when I got so goth? Do you not remember, like, my first World of Warcraft character that I played with you? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you're an undercover goth, though. A you don't gnome? look like you're goth. A gnome warlock that was, like, look... sacrificing his soul and you everything. You don't look goth. It's, fucking... it's cool. What does, every... what does everybody think? I do, I do like all that. No. What, oh, me? Goth? <laughs> I do have a lot of black shirts. The only thing I do have to say is that Eldorado Games still does smaller, smaller prints. Sure. So, so it if can be you harder to find do sometimes. like it, I would back it, and then maybe focus on the resale part, maybe, if you don't like it, because, like, if you go out looking for Winward, I'm not really sure where you'd well, be on. able to find that at. So, I've seen Winward at Barnes & Noble, and El Dorado, Did that, you really? their first game is at the grocery store Okay, never mind, just kidding, just kidding. So, <laughs> they might be getting better distribution <laughs> They're getting better think. at distribution, okay, because I still think of El Dorado being such a small company. They're getting bigger. I don't think they're I'm super happy big. to see them grow. I don't think they have like a million employees or anything. But, but I'm happy to see them grow. Yeah. Okay, so Jolly says, sorry, but no. Ray of Shine says, I'm backing it. 
Nathaniel there. says, did I miss the Avatar Legends decision? It's no, you next. did not. It is next. We're super excited and to talk about that And says, I am backing Legend Academy. I want it. There are too many good campaigns this I month. I know, right? There always It's going to get worse, too. It's it going to get worse, Mepper. All the slowdown from COVID is kicking worse. in now. Now everyone's getting their projects back to the table. Right. Next up, we have Avatar Legends, the role-playing game. So just to make this 100% clear, this is by Magpie Games. This is a RPG. This is a full RPG. It's when you a are, book with some dice. Yes, when you are getting this, it's a book, dice, and pen and papers and stuff. There's this been a lot of confusion <laughs> where people think that this is a video game for some no. reason. No, I'm telling yeah, you, really? there's been confusion. Who? Yes, I saw it on Reddit. People what? were talking about that. Like people are gonna be really sad when they find out that it's not a that it's not a video game. Why would they think this is a I video game? I don't know. It's happening. I mean, it's clear. I think it's very, so. Very, very clear. You know. All right. In this game here, you basically have a book that describes where you can go ahead and play characters in all the different eras of the avatars. Well, so I you get to pick talk the avatars. About the different eras cuz there's a era. lot of them. Yeah, eras, you get to pick right. the avatars like, like era. The time frame of when you're when you're doing stuff. And it gives you like a little description and talks about what's going on in that area and then you get to design the campaign based off of the era. Right. So you can be there in like Avatar Kyoshi when she was the avatar. Mm -hmm. You can go through to the 100 Year War, which is when the Fire Nation had defeated the other avatar, Avatar Roku. You can do Avatar Roku yeah. also. You do the 100 Year War where where the Fire Nation had taken over and was destroying everything. You can do right after Aang is awakened and like right after the show kind of ends. You can do the era also right after uh, Korra ends and that's like more technically advanced era like in the national camp. And every one of them has a different thing too. Are you corrupting, like are you trying to join together with forces? Are you stopping like the Empire? Are you trying to stop the Fire Nation? Are you trying to rebuild after everything that happened with the Fire Nation? Are you trying to... It sounds like I hate the Fire Nation. That's not true. <laughs> um, are you trying to do... Are you in the more technology advanced things? Like, you know, further on when there's like metal bending and technology. So you get to kind of really pick where you're, you're playing this and too. And you don't have to play as necessarily a bender. You get to play as someone with the technological Crafter, sort of one. martial artist, yeah. technology. There's like a bunch of Like you can specify stuff. in weapons and stuff like that. Like you don't have to play as somebody who's just using like a sort of key magical power sort of thing. Like you can play as a regular person there as well and then getting to go together in this group of people and having this awesome campaign where you're with all of these people and you have to work together for that. The, gosh, it gives me like shivers. I just got like shivers down my spine. My favorite part of this role-playing campaign or this role-playing game is the fact that you have to balance your character and what they're doing and they reward you for staying more balanced with your character. So if you do something out of character, out of character then you have you are penalized until you do that out of character thing. If you get really angry and stuff like that, like you got to do a really angry thing to help resolve that. Right. You have to kind of rebalance yourself, and you right. can, can really, really, really get off skewed. It reminds me a lot of Frenzy in Vampire the Masquerade. Yes. Where if you yes. do too many things, it gets you too far away from your humanity. That. You go into frenzy and you just that. act out and you do dumb stuff like slap a penguin or something. <laughs> you know. Don't slap a penguin, everyone. Don't slap a penguin. The fact that you can probably ride one of those polar bear dogs has <gasps> got me a tingle. I'm <laughs> you excited just about a that. Polar bear that dog. was my favorite so part about cool. Korra. Korra was a really good avatar, but I really liked that. I mean, obviously, Aang was more childlike whimsy, so it was yeah. kind of more fun to watch overall than Korra was. Korra got kind of intense. But Korra had that polar bear dog, which was amazing. The only other thing that was cooler were those giant lizards you could ride whenever they were hunting. The Fire Nation was hunting the Avatar and all of them. That was good, too. Yeah. That was good time. I really, really liked the, that portion of it. Like, they did such a good job. It makes you have, it makes you have the feel of being in Avatar and having to balance yourself with right. all the things happening. Well, like, in a show. Like, I, exactly in a show. The most unique thing about this one is it's not super combat-oriented. If it was, they would have all these really specific rules about water bending and air bending and everything. But it's like, no, that stuff's more just for the RP element of yeah. it, the role playing element of it. If you say you want to use water to do something, then you're going to roll dice. You're going to do the powered by apocalypse thing where you look at the chart to determine how successful it was or how much of a failure it was. But you role play through most of it. You're not actually, well, if you water bend, you have to have three concentration and 14 minutes and you have to study it. 
and it does X amount of damage three feet away, and you can be one foot up in the air. I mean, there's none of that aspect to it. It's very much like you can try anything you want. It can maybe succeed, maybe not, or how much it succeeds, but it's all in the role playing thing. So it's a lot, this is a lot closer to playing something like Vampire the Masquerade than it is D&D. Because Dungeons and Dragons is very much focused on the combat yeah. and specifically what you can and can't do. Where with Vampire, if you've got really like really high strength, you can throw a car. Right. You could throw maybe two cars. But it, it just depends on how far out of the realm of possibility. Can you lift up a plane? Maybe, but now you're pushing it. I so think... it's just much more about like how you want to do something instead of like can you do something. I think that's really, really interesting too because I know, a lot I of people it. can go in and pick an RPG or go in and try RPGs and be like, oh, well, we're going to play Dungeons and Dragons because that's what people play and realize that they may like the game, they may not like the game, but, you know, they may not like the game and be turned away and not realize that there's a whole bunch of options than just D&D out there of course. that are not just, like, mostly combat-based. Like, D&D is great, it's classic and everything, but the types of players that are going into those particular campaigns are more people who want to be, like, in there, do awesome feats, have all this combat and everything, whereas when you do hit a game that is focused more on just the role playing or focus more on just balancing characters or I mean there's like this huge world of possibilities out there. I know most of our audience are board gamers, but like and I know some of you I think most of, some you of you role heard, players heard about there. our vampire the masquerade stuff. That was the first <laughs> role playing game where we went two sessions and we're talking like, you know, four plus hour sessions where we just forgot to fight. Like we just didn't get into any fights. Busy talking to and people and doing things. I think that's things. the most exciting thing when you can play a role playing game yeah. and be so concerned about your character and the dynamics of your group and then the outer circle that you kind of just forget to do any battling. Mm -hmm. Like it just didn't just didn't come up. It wasn't boring either. It wasn't like oh, I'm gonna make cloth or something. Like no, we were doing stuff. We were yeah. overthrowing the prince of a city. We were and working taking hard. Over stuff, <laughs> but we didn't actually throw any dice. We didn't battle anybody. We didn't punch anybody. Nothing like that happened. It was all talking and going through different stuff with a storyteller and it was a lot of fun. I feel like this game leans a lot heavier that yes. way. So let's talk about the things that make you nervous about this. Well, one second. I want to just go through no, our comments I, really quick. So Nathaniel says, on. a role-playing game that penalizes the anti-role-playing? Huzzah! And Ollie says, sounds like heavily influenced by their previous game, Masks. I did not take a look at their previous game. That's I, a fairly popular one. Yeah, it's I know that they did Root. The role-playing game. I saw that one on their Kickstarter thing, but I didn't get too much further than what their previous Kickstarter content was. Now, let's see here. Do, do, do. There was another one. Oh, wow. All pre RPGs are dumb because I had a bad time at 5E session. Exactly. That happens and a lot, though, unfortunately. It happens so much. I mean, think about how many people don't yes. play board games because their parents or because their brother forced them to play Monopoly mm -hmm. and they hated it. Yeah, it exactly. Happens. And so, if you like funny stuff, there's just particularly just comedic RPGs out there. You, if you love, love really horror like sort of concepts and stuff, there's those RPGs out there that are going to build this like creepy <laughs> anticipation in your stomach. Like there's something for everybody. I'm dying with Nathaniel over here. He's like, as a DM, I'm sometimes, I'm hoping for five so I can stop voicing random NPCs. <laughs> Would you like some dust cakes? <laughs> you do your random gnome voice. Oh, gosh. Not right now. No, not you can't just spot. put me on the spot all the time. I'm not good with the voices. I fall out of them, in and out of them too too much. I'll start doing it. I'll be like, oh, welcome, everybody. So what we're going to be doing is... Every, <laughs> uh, and I just lose it halfway through. I can't do it. It is difficult. So I think that's probably the most interesting thing about this is the balance and that it is going to be much heavier on the storytelling side of it and just trying to like, have fun. And also, a lot of the things that you're doing potentially are small scale. Yeah. You're not like fighting a dragon. No. You might be trying to, well, like, like one of the big episodes the was there was, a, there was like a spirit loose and then it yeah. was like finding out why the spirit was rampaging and causing problems. Right. There wasn't a bunch of fighting in that episode or it could be running from somebody or maybe trying to heal the world after all the elements were ripped apart from each other and the Fire Nation took over everybody and was subjugating all the Earth people. Like that was some of the greatest things about Avatar in general as a show is that it had some really real-world implications that were bundled up into a kid's cartoon show when you have, like, these two clans that are fighting against each other because one thinks they're slobs, the other ones are, oh, they're elites and everything else, and then you find out they're actually really close to each other yeah. and they don't have a real reason to fight, but they've just been perpetuating this, this myth that the other side is bad for so long that they forgot why they hate each other. 
And so Which watching is, that kind of unravel is just really interesting. Some of the most, some of the best RPGs to play are like that, where you realize, you know, you're fighting with other players or you're fighting with whatever the bad guy is out there and you realize, oh, these are not bad guys. Like, this is, yeah. I have a completely new perspective on things and have I been playing wrong my entire life? I don't know what's happening. The one that rocks me is when we <laughs> went in and we found some goblins in a cave and we were like, okay, well, we're sneaky right now, so we're going to get the first attack. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to fire an arrow. And they're like, yeah, cool. You pin that goblin to the wall. The other goblins freak out. And the monk runs in there. He's like, I'm going to punch that goblin in the head. We're like, yeah, 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 that's cool. And then the barbarian's like, I'm going to cleave this other goblin in two. We're like, yeah. And then the DM's like, you slaughtered all the goblins. They didn't even have a chance to scream out, raise their voice, or, or call for help. And he's like, so why did you kill all of them? And you're like, well, because there were goblins and we had the opportunity to attack. It's like, goblins are inherently bad in this world. We, I've told you before you started playing that no race is inherently bad. They can be good or bad. This is their home. You broke into their home and slaughtered them all. Do That's they have the it? worst and then we're like, feeling ever. And then we're ever. like, do we still loot them? <laughs> and then, like, then oh, like no. we did. And it was like coffers. They were poor. There was nothing. There was no loot. There was no reason for us. to be. We were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And we killed a bunch of goblins. For no reason. You're the worst. We were oh, the worst. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. <laughs> so but those I'm just make saying. the best RPG campaigns, okay? They make they definitely make the memories best. that you will not forget. For real. I do like this dice pack too. No kidding, right? That's pretty legit. So Nathaniel says I played one game of Dread. I need to do that more. Strike that I need to be playing Dread's pretty sweet. games more instead of running them, right? Yeah. That's to every sometimes. DMs, that's every DM. Every DM. Always. Yeah. So Oh, okay. So uh, Oli, Oli, I don't, sorry, I'm just gonna just mess up your, Ollie, wow, that's, I'm bad. <laughs> Magpie has previously done a game called Legend of the Elements, which is also basically oh. a very much an R Avatar RPG. So, one of the things that you were worried about that you mentioned to me was you were worried that they had already had Root out there and that they hadn't fulfilled that one yet and they're working on this other one. Yeah. And you're worried about the time it would take for this to be completed and yes. delivered. Yes, that was my biggest thing. So, originally I went in this and I was like, heck yes, insta back, insta back, everyone, pow! Smash that back button so hard because look at all this butamous stuff. She backed it before got, the show, even. We got freaking maps, cloth maps for stuff. We got awesome dice for things. We have, I wanted the core book stuff. Like, I wanted all the books and everything. Like, they have some dice bags. They have these little journal packs I can give out to players. And then I went and looked at their Kickstarter and I was like, oh, like, they don't have root out to everybody yet. And that was back two years ago. And then I started thinking to myself, like, am I going to want to play this with my kid after waiting two years? I don't know. When they're like 13, 14. Because there's a lot of stuff that they're making. Like, and it's really cool. I'm really excited that they're it's making a, a lot of stuff. campaign. Huge, huge campaign. I'm so excited about it. And it looks so amazing. I'm just thinking for myself, am I going to want to play Avatar 2 two and a half years from now? Doctor, like, are think, you going to want to play Avatar 2 I think two we would play now? it, but one of the really big aspects of it was to play with our child who just recently yeah. watched Avatar for the first time. Because I you, like, want it now. Right. They'll be like 13, right 14 at that point. Are they going to want to sit down and play Avatar with their parents? Yeah. I think that's the biggest like, Taking 15-year-old kid. <laughs> and like, this really got Avatar. brought up the other day because I backed a video game on Kickstarter back in 2015. And it was a video game. And they're just now getting out the beta keys. And I went back and looked at all the updates. I mean, it was like $25. I forgot all about it. It just showed up where they started actually handing out beta keys and stuff and everything. And I was just like, man, why did I even want this five, six years ago? Like, I couldn't even really remember. And I was thinking to myself, and I saw a comment where someone's like, I got this for my nephew, but now he's like 14. Like, he doesn't want to play this anymore. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's true. After five, six years, that's quite a difference in a child's life, right? So... I'm not saying this is going to take five or six years, but if it takes two or three years, at that point, is our 16-year-old going to want to play this game? Yeah. I, I don't know. And Nathaniel brings it in right here. I'd back the PDF stuff that will likely be more, like, quotation marks, in on time. And that's where I was kind of looking at this. I was like, does it make sense for us to do the PDF stuff for this particular game? Because it's definitely an RPG I would love to play. But right now, as of this moment, we're board gamers that played a lot of RPGs back in the day, but we haven't had the time to play more RPGs yes. at this point. And this we is an RPG getting, I'd want to play with our kid. Right, we started getting rid of some of our RPGs. Like, I started getting rid of some of my older D&D because &D I had a bunch yeah, of 3.5 and 4th edition. Yeah. And I was like, well, the only campaign I'm playing is with my brother occasionally, and he's doing 5th edition, and it's all online now, so why do I even have all these books anymore? 
Okay, Magpie Games is in chat. Thank you so much for showing up, Magpie Games. We really appreciate you being here. Hey folks, while delays are always challenging, especially in the age of COVID, our contract with Viacom means we've taken the steps to ensure everything will deliver on time. That is so good to hear. I'm so, so glad that you showed up to this stream today to chat with us. Thank you so much. And like, Eric says, PDF have the advantage of taking up zero shelf space while still showing support for Very true. Game. That is very true, Eric. Here's my problem. We did bit boxes a long time ago, which was a way to basically strip all your board games down to just baggies. You put them into a little box, and then you put all of your maps and, and then like rules in like another long, thin box. And so it made it so we could fit eight games in the space of like three games normally would take, right? We never play those games, though, because we can't see them. So <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. If I get a PDF, I'm never, ever going to see it. I'm just going to forget about it. I'm going to get a new computer. I'm going to forget the flash drive. I'll never see it. I'll forget yeah. about it. If it's not on the shelf, like it's, it does, it is hard to I remember. I had so many PDFs yeah. for fourth edition and they got used like once or twice. Everybody just wanted to use my hard copy books. Yeah. So I, I feel like, and if you use them, that's great. There's so many people that are better or more disciplined than me that can figure that stuff out. I just never do. I'm so bad about it. If it's not right in front of me, I'll forget. As it is, our RPGs are up on top of our calyx. And we still like I forget that I forgot that we had like Deadlands up there and everything else we had. And we have Seven C up there, and I'm like, oh crap, I forgot we had all those up there. I want to talk really quick about this Otter Penguin pledge. There's a reason why this pledge is like super fantastic. So and just about the components that you're getting in here, especially since our channel leans a little bit more towards board gamers. I just want to let all of you know kind of what you're getting in this. You're gonna be getting like the journals which players or yourself can go ahead and write in. You have your dice and your dice bags. This box right here will make your game easier, especially if you're newer to RPGs, because this is going to give everybody their special abilities and stuff like that. And I love it so much when our RPGs uh, do this, you know, where I have cards that I can throw out at people to remind them of the things that they have. And it's not something that they have to remember, especially for people who are newer. You're going to get the core books, and then you're going to get these extra books here. Like, this pledge right here is where it's at. This pledge here is where it's at for a reason, for a really, really big reason. <laughs> Ollie says, I get way more out of PDFs. It just totally matters how you end up playing. And PDFs uh, are so easy to pull up and use. Usually I end up using both because... You always need extra copies of the books, honestly. Exactly. You always need extra copies of the books or you end up pulling up something later that you didn't bring with you and stuff. Like I always love the fact that if you do end up usually getting the base copy of a book, you end up getting like the PD PDF for free. And that is super, super helpful. Like, oh my goodness, so good. So this makes a really big difference. So Magpie says, glad to be here. We're so glad to have you reviewing the Kickstarter. And we're excited to get y'all books in February of 2022 before the official street date of March 22nd, yes. 2022. So that makes that a big difference. That is what I'm talking about right there, right? That is, that's really, uh, so having a street date where they're going to have it out for retail and everything really makes it so that they have to do things on schedule. They can't just like forget about the campaign for six months. Right. Not that I would assume you would, but you know, sometimes with games, stuff happens and things get delayed for a really, really long time. But having an official street date, that puts all your money's on that. Plus, this is a $3 million campaign. They like ran out of stretch goals at like a million six. Did they really? <laughs> Like, I haven't seen any new ones on there. We're already at, like, like, 3 million. It just keeps going That's all we got. Going. That's all we got, everyone. And yes, everyone's a big <laughs> fan of prompt delivery. I See, like, I think that the map is really cool. The they dice pack is really cool. Made this campaign so awesome. I was looking. excited about all those things. So excited. I can't tell you book. how fast I went in and backed it whenever I saw it. And all I did was read through it, and I read through, like, the mechanics and then that balancing portion of it. And as soon as I hit the balancing portion, I was like, boop. Yeah, no, I think that was probably the that best was, part, That was too. my Insta back right there. <laughs> so if it's going to be out in a year, we just have to convince our kid to still be an avatar for a year. Well, that's true. I think I feel like we could that's do that. Doable. I feel like we could do that, okay? The only thing that I'm super sad about is the fact that this deluxe dice pack, I want these deluxe dice so bad, but uh, that's, so like, like, that's expensive. Yeah, I like the other ones. I really? I like these ones. They're so pretty. Call me classic. How dare you? I like the classic symbols. How dare you, classic? What, uh, <laughs> so if you were a bender, what kind of bender would you be? Oh, I'm an airbender for sure. We've already had this conversation. All right, chat. What type of bender would you be if you were a bender? Because I'm really curious. I know we've already had this deep, deep discussion. What bender did you decide? The family decided for me what kind of bender I would be. You would be, be an earthbender. 
Because the doctor's so just, emotional still. I like throwing rocks. And he likes money. And I like throwing rocks. <laughs> and you like rocks. I have you actually do. thrown a lot of rocks to people. That is true. That That's is true fair. Story. So, like, you're your own, like, classical bender. Yeah, <laughs> I would throw, throw a lot rocks of rocks. rocks of people. <laughs> Daniel says earth. Yeah, no, you just I, said I our child is fire because it's all passion sure. oh, all gosh. the time. So much fire in that 110 child. 110 or zero yeah. percent. It's mm -hmm. all flame or no flame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, makes, so that makes me feel a little bit more comfortable with it, knowing that they have a street day like that with a major. I mean, when you're messing with Viacom, with you don't play they, around. Yeah, well, that's that like is, messing around with Disney. You don't want to be mess late. with Disney, okay? Don't mess. With <laughs> you don't miss mess with the big people upstairs. All right. So does that change your <laughs> overall perspective on it now? Yes. Fair enough. That so we just spent more money. We spent so much money on Excellent. Kickstarters today, everyone. Excellent. Because <laughs> this was the one I was most excited about going into it, which we don't know always cover RPGs. We've covered a few, and we've played some RPGs. Yeah. Like we played. We got an early copy of Altered Carbon that we played on our channel. Oh, yeah, was a that lot was of so fun. much fun. That was so but much fun. But we don't cover RPGs a ton, right? Because... But... We just usually don't have enough room in our schedule. To when cover we it. see a really unique RPG out here, because I think we talked about Pugmire too. Whenever Pugmire came out, like True. I really love seeing a fantastic RPG hit the market and being able to tell all you board gamers out there or RPG followers that hey, like this this RPG here is pretty special. Like you should take a look at it, and it's probably going to be something you would be interested in if you're interested in these sort of things. So, like, absolutely. I, I love hitting RPGs. It's still a passion. I want to play more. I'd play more RPGs. All I'm going to say is Uncle Iroh was his real father. <laughs> his real father all along. All right, everyone. If you're new to the channel, make sure to give us a thumbs up on this video. Subscribe and ring that bell to get notified whenever we go live so you can talk to us because we love talking to all your lovely faces out there. And thank you so much for everyone being in our chat today. You all are super amazing. You make this show so awesome. Like, I love being able to talk with all of you. And for you to bring your ideas and thoughts to this conversation, why you're backing something and why you're not backing something. Agreed. And if you want to have more conversation, join us in the chat, in the in Discord. Discord. Yeah, we yeah, have the Discord. Discord. It should be down in the video description or well, in the video description from the other one. We're going to go ahead and since we had to restart the stream, we'll move the descriptions over. So it'll be right. updated probably in about 10 minutes. And we will delete the old stream where we had Along all the bugginess. with links to all of the Kickstarters here. So if you're watching this later, you should have all the links in the description below. And then, Doctor, if you had only one campaign to back today, and chat, if you have only one campaign to back today, which one would it be? I'm going to go Dragon Bond. I'm going to say Dragon, Dragon Bond. Bond. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say Dragon Bond. I'm going to go with Avatar because that was, as soon as I saw it, I was like, whoop, insta back. That's fair. Yeah. I don't disagree. That's all, folks. <laughs> we will see all of you next week. Bye.